Hello fellow shooters, and hopefully some EOR guys are here today. Uh, this is Jeff Brozovich from longrangeonly.com, and we're here with some more gear reviews. Um, the current trend, have you been noticing over the past year or two, uh, guys are really stretching it out there. We're hearing more about the ELR shooting and records and uh, getting way out there with rifles. Um, I've ventured out to 3,000 yards on a few occasions and uh, done a lot of 2,000, 2,500 yard shooting with my 338. But uh, what we're going to do here is, I'm having a new rifle built. It's a 375 Shytac improved version. Going to be sending some big lead to weigh out there, and um, we're talking two miles plus. So we're going to be looking into that. So along this venture, we got to get some new gear. There's going to be some things it takes to get there. So that brings us to our first review. The Ivy adjustable scope mount. Okay, that's what we're going to be looking at today, and we're going to test it and run it through some paces. So uh, hang around and uh, we'll take a look at, at the close-ups on this mount. The first thing you're going to notice when you pull this bad boy out of its box is, holy cow, that's a chunk of steel. I mean, but it needs to be, right? It's got to be repeatable, it's adjustable, it's going to move, it's got to come back to zero. So that's what we're going to check out and make sure it does. But uh, for what it's worth, it, uh, it weighs about two and a quarter pounds, as far as I could tell, just weighing it off my trigger gauge, which may not be the most accurate way, but it's a, it's a little over two pounds. And uh, it is a good piece of well-machined steel. The rings on it are held down with the larger torque screws and there's six on each ring cap. I'll drop some pictures in here and show you some close-ups of the things I'm talking about as we go along. So next up, you have a look at these knobs and you think, what, what's all that about, you know? Well, it's got a positive lock system. This 4-cam lock right here, you unscrew it. It's dialed in MOA. This is the MOA version. They make a mill version too. And I should also say that they make these in 30, 34, 35, and 40 millimeter um, for scope tubes. So you start cranking up. As you see, it starts lifting the mount, giving you more MOA a cant as it cranks up. You can read it on the micrometer here. When you get to where you want to be, you lock it back down. We're going to do some calculations later that we, uh, off the numbers we got from our testing and see, you know, how they do match up at 50 MOA, see if that is at 50 MOA or, or if it's close or how we're going to get along there. But that's what we got here today. Okay, so we're going to do a little test here. I've uh, secured the IV mount in my bench vise and I've mounted a uh, dial indicator, digital dial indicator, mounted it on the mount and the dial indicator base is also on the vise. So if the vise flexes any, um, they should move together. So that's what I was going for here. Um, so we're going to run it up through its paces, take some readings, and see if it'll return to zero. Okay, I've zeroed the dial indicator. We're on all zeros. Usually when I unlock the lock on the IV base, it uh, moves about one thousandths when uh, you release the lock. So we'll see if that holds true again here. Yep, 1,000. Okay, we're going to start cranking up from zero. Okay, here we go. It's going to be 50 MOA per turn, and we'll uh, record readings all the way up and all the way back down. There's 50 MOA, and lock it. 64 thousandths. Unlock. Unlock it. 128 thousandths. And 
and at 150 MOA, lock it, 192 thousands. Okay, it'll go a little further here. Let's see. I think another 30 thousand or 30 MOA. 10, 20. Yeah, 30s right there. So that's 50, 100, 150, and 180. And the reading there is 0.230. Okay, I'm going to unlock it. We're going to head back down. I'm just going to go all the way to zero and see if it goes back home. I don't think I was quite in my groove there. My notch. There you go, zero, zero, zero. It performed perfectly all the way up and all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. I'm gonna run it all the way to the top, all the way back down, because it's important this returns to zero for us. So let's see what it does. There's our thousands, 50, 100 MOA, 150, 180 MOA, and we're about 1,000 saw for the last time. Okay, coming clear back down to zero. Zero. I don't think it can get any better than that. So we've computed our calculations. We measured the travel of the mount of the IV adjustable scope mount in thousands and we converted this and I gotta tell you I converted this on a calculator that my friend as you all know on the internet you know him as Eaglet and this guy is amazing and he built me a calculator to do these calculations um, off of run and rise and uh, it worked perfect and so I gotta give the credit for all these uh, mathematical calculations to my friend Eaglet he, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he bailed me out here and I really do appreciate that Eaglet anyway this calculator was so accurate that he built it. It, it allowed me to see a couple things. Uh, if I was off even a quarter of a thousandth on my measurement here, it calculated to like a half MOA. So my uh, dial indicator I used only measures in half thousandths. So anything we're off here was inside that half a thousandth, okay? So you've seen that... It ran the full gauntlet, the full travel of the mount, and come back to zero perfectly. Okay, so let's see how far off the actual dial is in MOA, or how, how close it is, actually. So, on our first test at 50 MOA, it rises 64 thousandths. That comes out to 49.8 MOA by my calculations. Now remember, again, that's under a quarter of a thousandth measurement. So, um, being off there. So most likely anything that this is showing off here was my method of measuring or my instrument that I used not being accurate enough to, to, to get us perfect to the 50 MOA. But it's so close that who's going to know, okay? At 100 MOA, we lift our rise was 128 thousandths, 99.5 MOA, okay? We're right there, right there, okay? At 150 MOA on the base, okay? It rise was 192 thousandths, which come up to 149.2 MOA. Again, we're dealing with a half a thousandths of measurement here is all we're off, okay? And then when I maxed the base out at 180 MOA, I had 230 thousandths of rise, and that come up to 178.9 MOA. So uh, almost 179 MOA instead of 180, again, we were within a half a thousandth of my measuring. I'm sure it was my measuring. So this jewel's right on, you know, and you've seen it come back to zero. So uh, I'm giving it a big thumbs up. I can't wait to get it on the rifle and go out here and be able to not only dial my scope in, but I can dial my base in. Just add the two together and, uh, man, we're going to be able to get way out there. So I'm pretty excited about this. Some other features I want to talk about of the IV uh, adjustable scope mount is uh, it's got... 
one heck of a good mounting system here. Of course, it'll need to be. It's going to be heavy. You add the weight of the scope to that and under recoil it needs to be. But it, it's got a full length clamp on one side and then two biting clamps on the other. These are spring loaded. As you open them up, it pushes it apart and when you tighten them down, that goes back together. On the back of the mount, towards the shooter, you'll see it has a bubble level built in. So once you get all dialed in, you got a level right there in front of your face to watch. And the farther you crank it up, the easier it'll be to see that um, underneath your objective. I popped the scope cap off here to show you the inside of this, and I'll drop another picture in. But as you can see, there's several relief cuts made where the scope rides. Um, this is going to essentially make this act like a series of rings instead of one huge wide one. Uh, so it's going to increase the clamping force on the pressure inside of that. This is going to virtually eliminate any chance of a scope tube moving fore and aft inside of these rings when they're torqued down. You'll also notice a dowel pin here to locate the cap. When you put your ring cap on, it's got a dowel pin to hold it centered up while you're tightening your screws and to keep everything in alignment. Underneath this base, when you start cranking this mount up, you'll see it's hard to show you in here, but I'll, I'll get a picture of it. There's a pin inside of here. It's like a, it looks like to be about a, maybe a, a quarter to three eighths inch dowel. That's an alignment that keeps that, keeps that base tracking true straight up and down when you're cranking and when you're moving it. So uh, that's, they've done their work there for alignment. This lock is something else. When you lock that thing, I've tested it. It won't move anywhere. And then in the front, a very tight fitting pin I'm not sure if there's ball bearings or not in there, but it's, uh, it's not got any movement in it. You can't make this thing wiggle or jiggle in any way. It's, it's very solid. The other thing I should mention is when you uh, crank your mount all the way back down, it comes down here to zero. You can remove your knob and there is a zero set adjustment inside. So um, let's say you decide uh, with your optic you wanted to, uh, you need to be 20 minutes up to zero. Well, you could take this up to 20 change your knob and you'll be set there with a zero stop at, at that 20 MOA or whatever you need. I, I'm going to use the full everything this thing has got so I'm going to use the full 100 and the rated at I think 175 MOA I can get 180 out of this one as you've seen in our test. So that concludes our uh, bench testing anyway or shop testing if you will of the IV adjustable scope base or scope mount. Uh, 175 MOA plus, um, very secure, very, uh, very nice, well-built mount with a level. Um, from here, what we're going to do is, you know, we've, everything looks really good. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on a rifle. We're going to take it out and do some testing at 100 yards and uh, see how it works out there and that it returns to zero, which I'm relatively sure it will after the test. And then we're going to be taking it to long range. So. We'll call this part one of this review. Uh, look for more out of this as we do some long range and ELR testing this summer. So uh, that's it for today. Jeff Brozovich from Long Range Only thanking you for watching. I hope you're following us on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well as subscribing to YouTube. And I'll come on over to the site. There's going to be a lot of ELR stuff going on this summer on longrangeonly.com. Thanks for being with us.